So uh, Julian, Divine has had a really compelling arc across the show. How has playing that arc impacted your perspective of the prison industrial complex and the way society treats people that have been through the system? Oh man, um, we as actors, I, I think our job is, is to, is a job of empathy and it's a job to, to, uh, to utilize empathy as a tool and as a weapon. Um, and I think what ended up happening is I always, always had an awareness that the, the prison industrial complex is a colossal issue in this country. Um, but to actually kind of have to experience, like have to do research about what solitary confinement actually does to a person. And, and Divine only experienced that for two weeks, having seen, and some people are in solitary confinements for months at a time, and seeing what the profound psychological impact that has on, on people and human beings, uh, for example, is something that has will always kind of sit on my spirit and on my soul um so it's it's a it's it's um i feel like it it, it doesn't do it justice to say that i'm learning empathy but um empathy is the is the first thing that kind of came to my head when you when you asked that question Marcus, we see Power developing more of his business savvy this season. Would you consider yourself to be business savvy at all? And do you feel like you learned anything about being a businessman from working on this season? Oh, uh, I think I was business savvy before I started working on it, but I'm even more so more than I've ever been now. Um, I think in playing the role, like I think I really got to understand, you know, like you really understand the value of a dollar and how far that stretches, you know? Um, and to think every, cause another thing about power is that not only is he business savvy, he's always, he's always thinking about the numbers of everything. Everything is, is about numbers and he's a, he's a, he's a math person. Uyutha, since you're new to the show, can you share a bit about your past experience working in theater and if there's anything that you took from that experience that you're bringing to working on Wu-Tang American Saga? Absolutely. When I graduated high school, I was a part of the show called Fela, which is about a Nigerian activist who spoke to the political government through his music. And he coined this phrase, music is the weapon. And it's it's the motivation behind a lot of the, the reasons why I'm, I'm able to sort of gain a better understanding and ease into the role because it, it stems around music per se. And I think to myself, how, is that, how am I using this weapon per se when I spit a certain rhyme or when I see a, a, a line, like how can I say it and, and use it as a tool for my success? A lot of these characters are coming from really tough backgrounds, and we saw more of that in season one, but it's still present in season two. Uh, and oftentimes people who come from those tough backgrounds are stigmatized for that. So how do you feel about telling a story that fosters empathy for a group of people that are often marginalized in that way? Anyone can answer. Well, I think like these, um, these people aren't far from us. This, these people are our family members, you know what I mean? These, this is our, this is history, it's black history. It's also American history. Um, and so like, it, for me, it, it, it's, it, it's a colossal honor to kind of tell these, to tell these stories and to embody these stories and put these stories to life and, and to put these stories on such a grandiose stage that, that is like our, our screens because they, they deserve to be there as much as any one of our, the stories that we see today. You know, you could, if, if White Lotus deserves to have an entire TV show, then Wu-Tang and American Saga deserves to have an entire TV show and be, and be uh, thought of and critiqued at the same caliber of thought because it's, it's, um, it's American history, it's American people, it's American culture. It's, you know, uh, 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 human culture and human people. So since there's not a lot of time left, I'll just do a quick question. Uh, being in a biopic series about Wu-Tang Clan means you get to cover and perform their songs. Are there any songs of theirs that you would love to do in the future on the show if it gets renewed for more seasons that you haven't already done? Well, definitely for the, the Wu-Tang Forever triumph, for sure. Um, I think that'll be the day yeah. Wu Tang and American Saga is set on fire. You know, I think that's just <laughs> that's just one of the most classic staple songs. I mean, yeah. He's also saying that because Inspector Deck has the problem. <laughs> has, 
Wine, <laughs> definitely, and ever drop. Definitely, <laughs> and I cannot wait to be on a wall, like just sliding <laughs> down. <laughs> well, congratulations on the season. I binged the whole thing last night. It's so good. It's so much fun. Oh, wow. I think the fans are gonna love it. So, uh, really, just job well done to all of you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Appreciate it.